Hi everyone, the random home cook here. If you're looking for a roast recipe that involves pork tenderloin and you want to impress friends and guests, this video is for you. Today I will make a roasted pork tenderloin wrapped in bread and bacon. I find this dish relatively simple with very few ingredients and affordable, a good budget alternative to more expensive cuts of pork, beef and lamb. I often prepare this roast in advance and this can help in our busy life. But let's get cooking! Ingredients for a single pork tenderloin are a baguette or a bread that can easily contain both the tenderloin and stuffing, some slices of bacon, about 250-300 grams in this case, depends on the thickness of the slices, I prefer smoked ones but normal ones can be used, three sausages without skin or the equivalent sausage meat, one pork tenderloin, some food grade cord to secure all together, salt, pepper, sage and any other spice you like, in this example I use those three and some cling film. Ready? The bread or baguette is best if soft and fresh. I start trimming one end of the baguette, then Roughly measure the tenderloin and cut the bread an inch shorter each side. Leave about a centimeter or two each side. Put aside the tenderloin and cut the bread on one side. Be careful using knives. Open it as a book. Once opened, Remove some of the bread inside to make room for the stuffing, tenderloin and sausages. Next, coat the inner walls of the bread with the sausage meat. I normally use herby flavored sausages or sometimes I use the ones I make myself. It really depends which one you like. This roast will feed at least three people with very generous portions. In the end, it depends on how hungry you are. Once done and happy with the result, you can put the tenderloin in. As you can see, it fits inside the bread, which is slightly shorter. Seasoning the meat is not necessary thanks to the sausage, however, the one I'm using are not enough to season the loin to my liking, so I add a very little extra. In this case, salt, black pepper and sage. Done with the seasoning, I close the bread and I usually secure it with a central string. This makes the following steps easier. It does not need to be a fancy or strong knot, it is just temporary. It is time to wrap the bread in a bacon blanket. I think for this recipe the bacon coating is very important, so I won't speed up this step. Take your time. As you can see, after getting the hang of it, it only takes around 3 minutes. I start from the edges because it helps holding the stuffing and juices in. 2-3 slices each side are sufficient. Then, one by one, I lay the streaky bacon it works also with other types of bacon, but I like this the most. Try to coat the bread evenly and completely, in particular on the top and sides. The bacon tends to stick to the bread, which is a bonus. If you realize that the slices are too short, as I do, you just add more. A little gap here and there is not a concern, but large gaps may cause the bread to dry and burn, affecting the final texture. Just be sure that all the bread is covered. I normally cook the roast in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius and for about 60 to 70 minutes, or until the bacon gets golden brown. I normally check with a thermometer to be sure. Depending on the overall size of the roast and oven performances, time may vary either side. To be safe, I normally check the roast using a meat thermometer 
and follow cooking guidelines, which I strongly recommend. In particular, for these preparations in which you cannot see inside. Before I started using the thermometer, I found that after 15 minutes, one hour, the bacon was getting evenly gold brown and there was my clue that the roast was about to be ready. Finished with the bacon blanket, I secured the bacon using some cooking strings. First, I secured the ends lengthwise, then I placed four or five loops around the diameter. I use a simple knot for the first one and then I use butcher knots for the rest. But you can use any technique you like. I will speed up this step that is probably the longest. After a few knots, I remove the temporary one. And here, the end result. Then, you can add a little bit of rosemary as a decoration. I normally prepare this in advance, so I wrap it in a cling film and I put it in the fridge. If you want to cook it immediately, skip this step. It is now ready for the fridge. Before cooking, unwrap and remove the cling film. Place in the preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about an hour. I like to place it on a grid to help an even cooking. After 45 minutes, I start to check the core temperature. The temperature I normally look for is around 75 degrees to have a safe margin and then I leave it rest for at least 3 to 5 minutes before removing the strings and carving. If you don't have a baking grid, it is fine to cook it directly on a tray with some grease proof paper. You can turn the tray to allow an even cooking of the roast. It smells delicious, I normally serve this with some vegetables aside. And now the moment of truth, what I was longing for. It is ready and it is dinner time. This is our first video and we had a lot of fun and learned a lot. If you like this video and you would like to see more, please leave a comment below, subscribe and press the notification bell.